So this is probably one of the hardest videos that I've ever had to film on my channel purely because um, I don't like speaking about things of this nature. I don't like speaking about um, what is happening in my personal life, what's going on in my life behind closed doors. But I also feel like I want this channel to be a platform where you not only see what's happening in my life, but you also know, you know, that as much as I've got good days where I will vlog and I will laugh and I will smile with everyone, I've also got bad days and I've got extremely bad days. So this video is just to give you a little bit of an insight into what I mean by those extremely bad days, really, really bad days. Um, and it, I'm basically going to be telling you about how I am trying to live a life after having been diagnosed with GAD. So if you want to watch this video, then Please keep watching. If you do not follow my social media, then you wouldn't know this. But if you do, then you would know. Um, I recently took a break off of my social media. I took a break off of my YouTube channel. I had videos that I pre-recorded. Um, so I managed to keep uploading content. But for a good month, or even a little bit more than a month, I haven't sat in this position and actually sat in front of a camera and recorded. So this is not only new for me, but I am nervous. <laughs> so a year ago, pretty much about a year ago, I was diagnosed with GAD. And GAD stands for uh, Generalized Anxiety Disorder. Now, I didn't quite know what this meant, especially when I was diagnosed because as far as I was concerned, this was my life. This is how I've known myself to operate for years. I haven't really been, I, I didn't notice anything different about me except the fact that I knew that at times I would struggle to focus or I would cry a lot and not know why I was crying or I would, um, you know, not sleep, not eat, not sleep, that kind of thing until it got to a point where it was too much for me to handle and it was affecting my daily life extremely and I went to go see the doctor. So basically I'm going to segment this video from when I was diagnosed, what my symptoms were and how I am dealing with it now. So generalized anxiety disorder is essentially in a nutshell characterized as an over exaggeration or um, a, 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 an over exaggeration of worry or anxiety that eventually impacts one's life in terms of not being able to function daily, doing daily chores, tasks, everything that you really do as a human being to function. So generalized anxiety disorder looks at how worrying about certain things in your life starts to affect you physically, mentally, and um, of course emotionally as well. You pretty much worry about everything. In my particular case, I worried about my family, I worried about my job, I worried about finances, I worried about my life, I worried about everything. Everything was a constant nag at the back of my head, constantly thinking about, oh, what am I going to do for work? Do I need to do this? How am I going to excel in work? How do I become better at work? How do I become a better person with my family? How do I not, how do I avoid fighting with this person? How do I avoid this, this? It just became so much that it was starting to affect how I was functioning on a daily basis. Going to work every morning, getting dressed, getting up, just getting up for the day was a struggle for me. Uh, it sometimes still is, but we'll get to that. Um, you know, just not eating, not sleeping, not focusing, um, not wanting to be around people, that kind of thing. But I didn't know what it was until I went to the doctor and that is a very very important part of what I'm about to say that I feel like one needs to acknowledge especially if you feel like you might be struggling from anxiety disorder my voice is shaking like I don't even want to 
um, but it is so important if you are feeling like you are struggling with something of this nature it is so important not to take my word for it I am not a doctor I am not trained I am not I am just telling you my experience with anxiety disorder and when I was diagnosed and what my symptoms were and what my treatment is so please if you feel like you are it's something I have to have to mention if you feel like you are going through something very similar please consult your doctor me I'm not a doctor so please consult your doctor and actually see a doctor about it and they will know whether it is what you're struggling with or not please okay so the first part of my journey is when I was diagnosed because you need to remember I didn't even know that I was having these problems until I was struggling to function with everyday life so I then went to my doctor and I absolutely love my GP like I love her so much love her so much because she was the one who actually alerted me to the condition that I have and um, I don't even want to treat it like it's a condition you know or call it a condition but she alerted me to um, my struggles with anxiety and uh, only after having visited her so one fateful day I went to the doctor's offices um, purely because for that week prior to going to the doctor's offices I probably maybe slept maybe 12 hours or 13 hours in that whole week I was struggling to sleep I was struggling to focus someone's calling me I was struggling to eat uh, my eating habits were nonsense so I went to the doctor to sort of give me something to help me sleep and also give me something to sort of open my appetite that kind of thing but for the most part I didn't know why I was feeling the way I was feeling but I went to the doctor anyway to go and find out so when I did get to the doctor um, she started me off with asking me a series of questions so she only in diagnosed me with anxiety disorder after three sessions of me going back and forth to her and um, the first time I went to her she asked me a series of questions but not in thorough detail so she also kind of figured that maybe I was stressed with work so she would give me something to help me sleep and things like that but um, even with what she gave me to help me sleep I still wasn't really sleeping yeah. in the second session when I came back I said uh, something is just definitely not right here I'm still not I'm still not I hate getting up in the morning I don't want to go to work I don't enjoy being around my family which is which is very strange for me because I am somebody who is very family oriented I didn't want to be around my family I didn't want to be around my friends I was crying a lot a lot of the time I was crying and upset and just angry at everything and I didn't understand why and I thought it was because I wasn't sleeping enough so then when I went back for the second consultation she then asked me a series of much more detailed questions in those questions she essentially asked me um, things like what my symptoms were am I eating am I not eating do I drink um, if so how often do I do those things um, uh, have I had any traumatic experiences in the past that I feel like I haven't dealt with you know, she was asking very very direct poignant questions that I would never really think to ask myself because I thought that this was me this was my life so she was asking all these questions and as she started asking those questions I remembered um, before each and every question she was asking I had to take a deep breath and think about it and there's one question which I won't mention what it is but she asked me one really really as as my doctor of so many years she knows about my life and she is not only my doctor but she's uh, the the general family doctor for many of my family members so she knows my life story well my recent life story so she asked me one question which I, I cannot say here but she asked me one question which made me not collapse but it 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 completely took 
the air out of me. I couldn't, I immediately started crying and she told me to, she gave me some medication and then she told me that she wants to see me a week later to find out how the medication was working. Some of the medication was uh, relaxants, some of it was anxiety medication of which I was unaware of because now she hasn't said what this medication was for. She just said that it's to make you relax, it's to make you sleep, I'm going to put you on something different to sleep and this and that and the other. When I came back the third week, I told her that okay I'm sleeping a lot better because of the heavy medication that she gave me but my eating is still not on and I, I still don't really feel like functioning. I don't want to go to work, I'm stressed all the time and I'm thinking of this, that and the other. And that's when she said that, uh, that's when she diagnosed me with general anxiety disorder. It was a lot to take in because one, I didn't even know what generalized anxiety disorder was at that time. I'm like, what is this? How do I make myself better? How do I want to be around people anymore? How do you get me to want to, is there some sort of miracle? I've got like notes here. <laughs> is there some sort of miracle pill that you can give me that I could just sit and um, that I can drink that will make me feel better? She, told, she called me a few days later and she told me that, listen, I want you to continue with the medication that you're on. I want you to, don't stop using it, uh, continue on with it and then we scheduled um, a range of visits thereafter. But what I loved her for is that um, they had been in the time that she was she diagnosed me and what have you. I went through also a very traumatic experience in my life, which. which is very, very difficult to speak about. But I had a miscarriage and at that time it was very difficult because I'm struggling with this part of my life that's happening and then this happens. The reason why I say I love my doctor so much is because she's that doctor that calls you like every not hour on the hour but she would call me every day to find out how I'm doing to find out if I'm sleeping that kind of thing um, just to check in on me and so when that traumatic experience happened while dealing with the fact that you've just been diagnosed with something like this um, it was again a big blow um, to me trying to get my life back on track. So my symptoms were all related to home, personal life um, and um, just everything, work, finances, everything that was going on in my life. And the symptoms that I was struggling with was loss of sleep, terrible eating habits, uh, I was not eating. If I was eating, I was eating terrible food. And you guys would only see the days where I felt like I was okay, okay enough to film what I eat in a day or that kind of thing. But on the days where I wasn't feeling okay, I was eating absolute trash and or not eating at all. And then it was loss of sleep. Um, and because of loss of sleep, when I would get to work, I was struggling to focus. There were times where I would actually feel sleepy, even at work, which was a really, really serious problem because there was a time where a colleague of mine actually caught me like resting my head on my table because I just couldn't keep my eyes open. But at night, I could not get myself to close them. That's how bad it was. And then there were also the feelings of not being in control. I'm somebody who likes to be in control of myself, of my life, of everything that is going on in my life. I like to be in control. So not feeling in control was, it's, it's one of the hardest things for me because I, I don't like feeling that way. Not feeling in control makes me uncomfortable. It makes me uneasy. So. It was that coupled with I was just I was just really not not happy not happy just not happy I would just go through each day by day by day but 
could never really remember when I was last genuinely happy. I was tired a lot of the time. Um, and because I was tired, I was a lot more aggressive and I was snappy with people. I would get into a lot of fights. I would get into fights with my family members. I would get into fights with my friends. But those were the symptoms that I got a lot of before um, I was diagnosed. I, I just didn't want to be around people as well. Like the social anxiety was horrendous. I didn't want to be around people. I didn't want to go out. I wanted to lock myself in the house. The only thing that made me happy was filming and recording. For some reason, I used that as an outlet for myself to just, 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 just get on with it. But yeah, that was that. Um, after that, after having seen the doctor, I was then um, put on to treatment and I am on anxiety medication, I am on relaxants, I do not know what they call that medication. One is bris, bris, Bascripone? I don't know, but I'm on medication that I take on a daily uh, basis. Uh, well, I took it on a daily basis for the first couple of months and then sometimes I take it as and when I need it, when I feel like my anxiety is flaring up, when I feel like I'm not in control, when I feel like I'm not sleeping, I've got medication to help me sleep. But also some homeopathic treatments that I've researched up on and read up on, um, <clears throat> I've bought. Uh, the reason why I bought a humidifier is actually because not only does it clear my sinuses and all that jazz, but it relaxes me quite a bit. I manage to sleep. Um, I also, it manages to put me in a very relaxed space. I've got one in my bedroom and I've got one in the lounge area. And um, I've also got some apps, some relaxation meditation apps. If you guys want more detail about these things, I'll definitely get into that. But there are many, many things. Apart from that, those, uh, the biggest one as well is sleep. I force myself to sleep. Because when I do sleep, sleeping helps me feel better. Not only do I feel better when I wake up, but I'm more clear-minded and I just, I just, generally just feel a lot better things but essentially this video was to you know share with you what my struggle is with GAD and how it is continuous this is not something that you switch on and off this is your life this is how it is um, and I wanted to share that with you so that you guys know that it's, it's not always roses sometimes it stinks and sometimes it stinks really really bad and yeah that you know the youtubers that you see they are people as well that you see and watch and you see them at a mall every now and again and what have you they are people as well and they go through hectic struggles as well i think just 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 be mindful of your comments of what you say be mindful of the people that you interact with every single day what you say to people because you don't know the struggles that people are going through and that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna close this video. I'm 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 I'm. Till then, I'll see you in the next one. I'm fine right now. I'm managing it. Uh, I've got good days and I've got bad days, but I'm I'm good. Apart from the fact that I've been an emotional wreck right now, for the most part, I'm very good. I'll see you in the next video.